Get this. Weekdays on the Triple M Network and KOFM in Newcastle. Get this around the nation with Lano and Woodley. It's a little bit like me and Cole were in a TV show called The Comedy Sale in the yeah. mid-90s, right? Yeah, that's right. And it lasted three episodes. Cole mm. has since uh, raised the bar and been in a show that only lasted two episodes. <laughs> You'll be back, Frank. Um, <laughs> You'll be back bigger but, and better. But we're in this show that only lasted three episodes. And you know yeah. shows like um, Get Smart and stuff like that, mm. when they originally come out, they're on one night a week, mm. and then they're on for years, and then they bring them back and they go Monday to Friday. Yeah. yeah, you know, like yes. that. Well, I, I actually opened up the TV guide, and the show that we're on, The Comedy Sale, was being shown at five in the morning, mind you. But right. at five in the morning, it was being shown Monday to Friday, but it only got to Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> and that's true. Oh, mm. I remember a few years ago, there was an Australian film called Those Dear Departed. Oh, yeah. I never even heard of that. With Gary McDonald and oh. Pamela Stevenson. Ooh. Right. Mm. And that came out on a Thursday. Uh-oh. And on the opening day, the ad said, hurry last days. <laughs> <laughs> and it was off by the Monday. <laughs> what was the show that was being launched as a Tonight Show for, for someone that got cut like only 45 minutes into the show? Because Kerry Packer oh, ran that was Doug uh, Mulray's. Uh, Doug Mulray's. That's Australia's naughtiest, naughtiest home video. That, yeah. That's setting the bar pretty high, isn't it? When you get axed before the, even the end of your show. <laughs> it's got to come back because it was brilliant. It Everyone was mentions that. Yeah, it's a mention like once a month on this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we always have to point out the moment that it got ripped off here by uh, Curry, Peck, Curry, Curry Picker. Picker. <laughs> Curry Picker. Curry <laughs> Picker. We can say what we want about him now. He was yeah. a Curry Picker that moment. <laughs> uh, it was just as the child child reached for the kangaroo's genitals. It wasn't, it wasn't, Tony. I'm going to tell you In some this. states, in Victoria, that's when it went off. Because right. in, in New South Wales, where I was, mm. it was in the fields, just a couple of horses going at it, guided by hand, as it were, and uh, <laughs> and the cameraman laughing and shaking. Yes, and someone called us up and said, in Adelaide, it got taken off here just as they had the Afghan... The Afghan dog joining the end of a conga line, <laughs> misinterpreting right. it. And, and apparently, <laughs> misinterpreting it. Apparently, in Tasmania, they let it go. They let it go all the way to the goat scene, where the man. Actually, I can't even no, talk can't. about it. No, it's still playing though. It's on YouTube. It's a stage show. It's Tassie now. Frank's got good advice for uh, you know if you're going on stage, if you're just starting out in the comedy game. Mm-hmm. What was that uh, Rodney Rude tip you were giving us before? <laughs> on here? Well, just when you were introducing us, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't here, and I ran in just at the last second. And the reason why I wasn't here was that I. I was actually um, ev- evacuating my personal plumbing. In yeah. the, I was doing a poo. You were sure. dropping some kids that's off the Yeah, and that's why I wasn't here in time. And it just reminded me that uh, apparently Rodney Rude once uh, came on late <laughs> and he said, I'm sorry I'm late. Um, you know, it's because I was doing a poo. It's very unprofessional of me, but it's more professional than doing the show with a bog in my jocks. <laughs> <laughs> he then added that. Yeah, they go basic. Yeah. I wasn't there, but apparently. No, nah, you wouldn't want to do the show with a bog in your jocks. <laughs> or as uh, Rodney calls it, his... Frog sack. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Any excuse to play that? Has the show started? It, very well. It started brilliantly. We've got to think of an ending for Lionel oh, Woodley's yes. career. Easy. Yeah. Oh, Easy. Right. I'm just thinking when me and Mick Malloy finished our radio show, we ended with Puppetry of the Penis, and that really yeah. that was, oh, <laughs> right. wasn't a good... No, I don't want to yes. be doing any Puppetry of the Penis, <laughs> because you know how some people have got outie belly buttons and some people have got innie belly buttons? Yes. Well, I've got an innie penis, oh, so there's not a lot of tricks. <laughs> it doesn't oh. work in the theatre. There's not a lot of tricks. <laughs> what about... I know how you can... I mean, the traditional <laughs> ending. A, Richard's apologising <laughs> for booming me. <laughs> it's quite disrespectful. Okay. I think if I tell a joke about having an innie penis, you can do whatever you want. All right, look, maybe you've just got to have a traditional ending, the way most uh, comedy duos end, by dissolving into rancor and hatred. Uh, (laughs) But then you guys kind of do that every night Yeah, well, that is the weird thing. We have actually been splitting up on stage every night for the... For the last 20 years. Right. So it is a little bit weird that I'm sure at the end of it on Saturday night, I'm going to be kind of going, so, but this time, really. <laughs> this I'm, time, really. Uh, we, you know, it is yes. quite bizarre. But Yes. Well, yeah. Frank is going to suck my finger for the very last time oh. Saturday, oh, Saturday yeah, don't night. Don't say that. Don't say that. Because <laughs> right? I, I say, don't you ever touch me again. And then there's this long kind of thing building up to it. And although I, I am a little bit kind of, look. Frank makes me a little bit physically ill sometimes, but I do let him <laughs> suck my finger every night in the show. It's a and, sacrifice. Uh, it's a, it's, it's, the it's kind a of sacrifice. Guy, he's, he's the kind of guy who, 
Like he doesn't even like sitting in a chair if it's still warm oh, from really? the previous person. Oh, is that right? So that's a big mm. artistic yeah. sacrifice on Colin, his part to let me suck his finger. Colin, yeah. what about dogs licking your face? <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I don't like dogs. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, like, dogs. Cole's not really into things that have like a heartbeat, are you? No, <laughs> not really. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no. no. Frank's got not. Frank's got a dog though, and oh, he's, he's, it's a beautiful that. dog. It's yeah, called yeah. the People. I'm, yeah. Um, I call it that because uh, then I get to say at least once a day I get to say I'm going to feed the people. Yes. <laughs> it makes, just makes me feel good. And I <laughs> saw the two of them down at the park the other day. And I, I get think, you. Get your sound effect ready. Richard. Get your sound effect ready. I saw them down at the park the other day, and I think the little fellow was a bit sick because after he did a poo, he wiped his bottom on the grass, and the dog just sat there watching. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Can we top this for an ending to a great 20 year career? Let's end on that joke. I've got this horrible feeling that, you know, something's going to happen on the last night yeah. that is going to ruin the last 20 years, like at the last minute. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be. 20 years of goodwill. Yeah. It's going to be destroyed. I don't know. Maybe it'll be like, because we've got this video montage that we play of, of um, stuff over the last 20 years. Uh. And, and maybe like we'll accidentally swap the tapes and there will be that tape <laughs> that I that I sent into Doug Mulray's show of me having sex with a guy. Or something, and it'll come up. And, but you know, that's a good take. Yeah. Like, well, actually, as far as, I think that's unlikely because, as far as I know, no such film exists. <laughs> but, but that could be one possible ending. Yeah, Something's yeah, yeah. going to go horribly wrong. Is Axel yeah. Whitehead invited <laughs> to the closing night? Uh, He's uh, yes. right. He's yes. good for an ending. Oh, yeah. um, I was going to flash. So out of touch. I don't even know who he is. He's who the is... guy who flashed his penis at the Aria. Oh, testicles. Yes. Yeah. Flashed his right. testicles. We're not going to be doing. Oh, it was his testicles? Was it? It was yeah. his. Yeah. Can we have Rodney Roods? It was his <laughs> frog sack. <laughs> <laughs> You mentioned an album, didn't you guys just win the Aria Award last week? You guys get an, you know, we Aria. did, and I have to say, I was, I was, you know, people get up uh, like and give speeches, and they go, you know, I'm genuinely shocked. Mm. Well, I was totally genuinely shocked because I reckon that album's shit. Oh, <laughs> there you go. No, it's all right, but I was surprised that yeah. that we won an Aria. Frank, you wouldn't want the Aria at your house. It's so pointy and dangerous. Exactly. Well, apparently, yes. After um, how many you got, Tone? Uh, Oh, well, Mick Malloy has all our arias. Mm-hmm. You didn't get one each? No, we just got one to share. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I just said, you have them at your house because I am so clumsy. I will fall on that. And if that happens, that's all you'd be remembered for? Mm-hmm. You know, you know the guy who got they've... skewered on his own accolade? <laughs> <laughs> they're so dangerous. You know, they are dangerous. <laughs> I, apparently, when you win them, you get them in your hand, and then as soon as you come off stage, they take them off you because of an ugly incident at the after party about five years ago. Because yeah. like, you know, they're very, very pointy and You're not allowed to run with them. And heavy. But, but it was funny because when we flew back, we were allowed to take them on the plane. So apparently, Al-Qaeda at the moment are desperately trying to bring out a fantastic album. <laughs> That's great. The biggest accolade, as you know, is to be mentioned in Parliament in Hansard. Have you had that happen yet? Lane Owen Woodley. (laughs) No, not not that we know of. What we've done is we've challenged parliamentarians Mm. to mention our show Mm. or catchphrases or even obscure references to this program (laughs) in Parliament because they'll get into Hansard and they'll be on the record for Mm. all time. Right. Have you seen any of this happening yet? No, I know that you did it, and I know that you, you got a lot of members involved. I, I taped... I don't, I don't know what the results were. Taped what? Order in the House the other night. Did you? It's I not love a... to tape Order in the House. It's so good, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, it's a great show. When will they bring them out on DVD? <laughs> With a special cabinet. <laughs> That's yes. so that you can keep yeah. them all in. Box set. Shaped like Parliament House. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, this is a very poor recording. You really have to concentrate, but I'm pretty sure bits of this show are being mentioned in Parliament. Have a listen. Okay. If I didn't say it, I'll say it now, Mr Speaker. And uh, I think... It's very important, though, that um, as in all of these things, uh, we don't Order. we don't we Order. don't sort of zealously embrace uh, a particular report or a particular piece of analysis. Order. The member for Grain has asked his question. Let me simply say to the um, the member for Graindler. Exactly. And Order. the first and most important thing you do when you respond to something is you don't Order. close your mind to. One important option, Mr. Speaker, and the important the of Ballarat is that the, uh, nor, nor, Mr. Speaker, do I believe that it does not comprehensively embrace all of the world's major emitters. And you Denison. cannot have an effective response to global warming. We would, Mr. Speaker, we would. The member for Denison is warned. Uh, we would be assuming obligations, Mr. Um, Minister for Foreign Affairs. Mr. Speaker, uh, the answer is I'm that I do money. broadly uh, remember the statement. Uh, order. Uh, order. Uh, the Prime Minister has a call. It doesn't in any way uh, all of the substance of this debate. Sure, Australia signed the original 
Kyoto Protocol, but we never ratified it. And the reason we, we never ratified it. The member for Lily is warned. This um, inane mantra of the Labor Party Order. at the present time. Order. The, Order. the Deputy Leader, Leader of the Opposition is warned. Well, the member for Law. If we are interested the member for Brisbane is warned. In reducing climate change, Mr. Speaker, the member for Fowler is warned. The member for Sydney, the deputy leader of the opposition. The member for Lily. The member for Melbourne will come to order. Oh yes, yes. Oh yes, yes. Very out of touch. So well done, everyone who contributed there. I didn't know Rodney Roode was the member for Lily. <laughs> How did they smuggle all of Toto I don't know. into the press They're gallery? Amazing, those guys. <laughs> Pamela Stevenson got mentioned just a moment ago amazing. in the most obscure possible context. Yeah. We get off air and she's looking at us through the glass. Yes. <laughs> she's in the next studio. Actually, she hasn't spotted us. She wouldn't no, know who we are. No. no. Wouldn't know but, who we are. but that's weird, your powers to manifest. Mm. People. We maybe who maybe we should start talking about the Lord Jesus Christ <laughs> and see if he yeah. descends. He's uh, booked on the cage. Oh, yeah, He's yeah, a yeah. regular. Old. He does a duet with the Scaredies. He does. Yeah, yeah. Stump the Messiah. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Charles Firth, former employee of the network, uh, sacked a couple of years ago, but wormed his way back in to plug his new mm. book, American Hoax. We're going to get to that. But first, you know, which one from The Chaser are you for people who might not know? You're the one who's usually in America. Yeah, I'm the one who does the Firth from the USA. <laughs> that yeah. one? Yeah. So I'm the one who usually almost gets killed, where, no. whereas the rest of them just get arrested. Uh -huh. um, I actually have to put up with Americans who, like earlier this year, I, I went and... Uh, Tried to get into a, a U.S. military establishment uh, dressed as a gimp because <laughs> I heard that that's what was going on down at Guantanamo uh, Bay, and I wanted a bit of the action. Yeah, uh, and so I uh, I went there, and they went, "You can't come in, you know, you can't. We're not going to let you a gimp like in." A gimp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know why, but then they put me in this arm lock, which I have never experienced before in my life because it was absolute searing, shooting pain. Oh, that's oh. standard. Yeah, um, right through your shoulders, like completely disabling and then they walked away and they released me for the arm lock felt perfect it actually felt better than perfect like I felt oh my it's <laughs> therapeutic yeah, the other yeah. arm please sir <laughs> so, so I did that all year and they paid me a third of what the rest of the guys are getting oh, so. okay. where'd you get your gimp Fast. costume <laughs> um I went to a shop. Actually, I went to two shops. I, the first one, I went, I went, hello, do you have a gimp outfit? And they went, um, no, we're just fancy dress. <laughs> right. Go, go as a pirate. Yeah. So then I went to a Pets R Us shop, and I got the chokers and everything like that. And, yeah. and, and I said, you know, are you sure this fits around my neck? And they said, oh, well, we can try it for you. <laughs> right. Sort of. And then, uh, then I had to go to a sort of sex shop, and yeah. okay. so there's yeah. no Which, just for purely for research purposes yeah. <laughs> so to get the props. You yeah. would think that was all. Surely there would be a gym costume in ABC wardrobe. You know, one sure. from the old Saturday show, the National <laughs> Seven. They were always dressed as gibbs. You know, now look, I'm a huge fan of the Chaser, yeah. uh, but um. I remember in the early days. There was yeah, you know, it was hard to tell everyone apart. You know mm. that always happens when you start yeah, a new true, yeah. a new comedy show. Mm. But you kind of stood out by you were giving it a bit of grunt from the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> I decided uh, that if I shouted, then right. people would notice me more. Yeah. So I so I had the Firth character, and the Firth character always hated everything about anyone. <laughs> um, and he was kind of in the it was the Firth factor. Yeah, the Firth factor. And he was in kind of car keys. And he was into simple solutions to complex problems. <laughs> that was his main thing. Everything. The solution was simple. Yeah, and that's right. And I actually had, yeah, I had khaki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a mo for a while. In the <laughs> no, 19, that's good. Uh, in the 1970 versions of uh, the first factor. And what, are you still, you know, affiliated with, are you in America? What is the story with yeah, you? Yeah, so I live over in America. Mm -hmm. um, I actually hate the rest of the Chase. Oh, there we go. Fair enough. Um, in fact, I mean, Julian, I don't know whether you know, yeah, the, yeah. the sort of balding, yeah. unfunny yes. guy <laughs> on the thing. Okay. Yeah, we had a huge falling out a couple of years ago. That's why I had to move over there. <laughs> Right. Um, and then, I mean, Craig, he's just moronic. Yeah, like, yeah, he, yeah. everything, he has to be scripted even in meetings. Oh, Is that right? Yeah. Really? Off an auto-cue? <laughs> off an auto-cue. Yeah. Everything, yeah. Chris Taylor, you know, everyone thinks he's really sexy. Yeah, yeah. He's actually just very, mm, yeah. Is he hideous in real life? He, he, 
he invites people around and you have to sit in a spa. Is that right? You know, oh, no. To have a coffee with him. And it was Dominic somebody. Where's he? He's not even yeah, in the show he's anymore. He's not even in the show. No, he actually just writes the whole show oh, okay. and then everyone else looks good. Uh, is that That's how it works, works nowadays. <laughs> yes. Charles Firth from The Chaser is with us. He's got a new book, American Hoax. Mm. He lives in America mm. and he's wearing some fancy new fashion item. I don't understand any of his clothes. He's, he's, he's from Look, the future. We're just a, a bit ahead of the curve in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys? Because like, you're wearing a hoodie, but it doesn't. Mm. There's no hood. Yeah, no, that's right. No, well, it, there is a hood. It's a sort of. Um, it's a cape. It's, it's a, a cape. cape. You're wearing <laughs> a cape. <laughs> they are in. I swear. In a year's Capes time, are in. Yeah, yeah, they'll come back. No, but it's got a zip. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah zip yeah, it yeah, up, say, and then over your head. See, over that your head is becomes a hoodie. Yeah, but quite... then, but then when you unzip it, it falls straight cape. on your back. So you can fight crime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at that. Chicken See, because you're wearing it, you're wearing a hoodie as well. But look, I'm so unfashionable. It's like a pouch at the back. It's like a tone. Oh, how embarrassing! How dag. <laughs> you are so six weeks hey, ago. Hey, Tone, what T-shirt are you wearing underneath? Please, uh, please. It's nothing. It's oh, got, you were hoping it was it. a Mick Malloy T-shirt. Yeah. Which I was caught wearing a Mick Malloy T-shirt. Oh, How Mick embarrassing. T-shirt. <laughs> That's like Hale getting around with a Pace T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a huge Pace fan. <laughs> uh, what about satiny caftans? That's the thing. We're yeah. showing... Charles that he couldn't believe he thought, it was, he thought that was a hoax. <laughs> it was a joke. No, Satney Caftan lounges have taken off. What was it? Mm. Nine thousand more orders than they had caftans. Caftans. Yeah, so no, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take some back to New York. I'm oh, gonna try yeah. and convince them that that's the latest, latest. Uh, here's something pretty obscure. New York. This film Short Bus yeah. opens today, and it's Whoa. from uh, John Cameron Mitchell, who did the film Hedwig and the Angry Inch, which Ed's a huge fan yeah, of. Massive fan. Uh, Short Bus, as you may notice, down in the corner. Oh, R18, high-level sex scenes, yeah, yeah. actual yeah, sexual yeah. activity. Yeah, now, I went mm. I went to a preview screening by myself. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. It's always a good look. In a, in a trench coat. Yeah, well, I yeah. had a hat and a jumper on, so <laughs> it, was, it, it was close. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone had caftans on. <laughs> Billowy caftans. Yes. Uh, Ideal for people. self-pleasuring <laughs> at the cinema. <laughs> people brought a doona. When I walked in, they've done this. I hate it how they now have like allocated oh, seating in movie yeah, theatres. Oh, oh, I hate yeah. it. That's Short bus isn't going to play in the big megaplex, you know, after the Da Vinci Code. Like, it's in the small, yeah. easily washed theaterettes, right? <laughs> I was the first person there. I sat down in row G. People filed in, filed in, filed in. By the end of it, my whole row was completely filled with people. And then there was only like three other people in other rows. Yeah. And the couple next to me was making out during short bus. Yes. Now, do now that's you, gross. Is it embarrassing uh, yeah. when you're at one of these films mm-hmm. with actual sex okay, in Okay, don't them? say one of the, like I go all the time. But, there is is a, <laughs> <laughs> but I've been to a couple of them and it's yeah. frankly embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Yeah. It's embarrassing when the couple's kind of kissing and laughing next to you. Yeah. And the woman next to me was just... Like, she just, like, popcorn was a life, man. It's How blue does it get? It's the first second of the first scene, everyone's kind of chatting, and then it was like, blah, 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 dead silence, <laughs> right? And then a bit of nervous laughing as a man tries to pleasure himself, mm. but, like, not with his hand. No, there's probably no more information required. No, and there's nothing else you can say about it. Rich and Marson's nodding along. Is he using a Turkish grip or what? The... He, he, it's, <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Is he but using what? a Turkish grip? <laughs> what what's what the Turkish... hell is that? What's a Turkish sure. grip, Rich? Does it involve a tuck of some description? I mean, a, a tuck? Like... A what? <laughs> what the... I'm not sure what's going on. What is Richard going on? Man. What do you mean a tuck, Rich? <laughs> I need a diagram. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, no, just describe it. Let's <laughs> say you were going to Turkish grip yourself <laughs> on air right now. What would you do? Well, I think it invo- well, it's European for starters. Yeah, yeah, it's um, Turkish. So you said that. Pretty, uh, yeah. No, I think it's it's a it's a bend back sort of. Uh, what a nonsensical uh, conversation. Uh, Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and in then the what? <laughs> <laughs> then, and then we take it to a late night show. Don't worry, Upstairs. it's in the first minute of the film. <laughs> All will be revealed. And then it's just fruit, fruit, fruit after that. Right. It's confronting. It's the most confronting movie I've seen since, you know, Benji the Hunted. Mm. It's filthy. It's beautiful. It's wonderful, but it's filthy. I can't recommend it, though. I can't sit here and recommend it. No. Well, except David Stratton gives it four stars. Yeah, yeah well, he was there. Oh, right, Dave yeah. was there. Trust me, he didn't see a minute of that. All right, he didn't. He, was he just hardly too, looked up. Too you know? busy using the Turkish grip. <laughs> but the thing is, you can't recommend it. Like I remember, I went on a uh, on a first date with someone this year, and she yeah. said, "What's your favourite film?" And, and I said, "Oh, with no line or happiness, right?" And she said, oh, oh, "Oh no, I'll get it out. I'll get out happiness." Oh, no. <laughs> and there was, was no second date. No, I'd be I guessing. I never heard from her again. Yeah. <laughs> what is the latest? Uh, oh, because oh, was that dodgy? that Saddam Hussein was sentenced to death just a couple of days before the election. Is that a conspiracy? No, not at all. No? 
complete coincidence. Yeah. Amazing, that. Didn't really swing things, though. Did no, it didn't really. Maybe they could hang him twice. There you go. <laughs> it's really weird because he should be shot. Mm. He shouldn't be hung. No. Mm. It's too good for him. Yeah, it's too good for him. <laughs> Sorry, we just turned into the John Laws program. I'm going to be reading uh, the ballad of Judge Roy Bean in a few moments. Maybe they could hang him and then shoot him. Better TV. Yeah. Here's what they're doing in Wilmington, Delaware. A sex offender mm. with a history of exposing himself has been ordered by a judge to wear a T-shirt proclaiming, I am a sex offender. Is that all, though? That's all. That's all it says. That's, <laughs> actually, that's actually the latest trend in there. Oh, it's right. yeah. yeah, cool. <laughs> wear it with a hoodie. And how... You know, is that enforced? Would they be? Would there be someone yeah. there when he gets up in the morning to yeah, make sure yeah. he's got and, the shirt on? Because I thought, what, like, wouldn't it get really smelly after a while? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's for four years or something. That's part gotta... of the punishment. Yeah. If he didn't wear it, could someone else wear? I'm with a sex offender. I'm and just a sex offender. Walk around, <laughs> around all day. Yeah, actually, probably increase your chances of picking up, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you could have yeah, kinky <laughs> or I heart sex offender. Yeah, we, yeah. Maybe yeah. they might allow him to sort of, yeah. you know, maximize. Yeah. It up a tad. Uh, ho- that's not a hoax. No. I accidentally started a hoax once. Oh, yes, Tom. We just mentioned on here, on Triple M, way back in the early 90s, on our breakfast show mm. in Melbourne, that uh, Billy Pinnell, who's a rock guru, oh, yeah. and I'm trying to describe, how would you describe what Billy Pinnell looks like? It's hard to say, yeah. but he certainly wouldn't be in Tism. Let's just say that. Yeah, there we go, yeah. And we just, <laughs> as a throwaway comment, mentioned that he was the saxophone player in Tism. Um... And it caught on for about 10 years. <laughs> Billy you... Pinnell could not go anywhere. Oh, I thought he was the saxophone player in Tism. <laughs> I don't think he plays the sax. Yeah, oh, right. And he's been to Tism gigs. <laughs> and oh, like, all been to Tism so gigs. people will be going, hang on a second, wait, <laughs> he's going to go backstage soon. <laughs> And nah. then one time Billy would like disappear, like just as the band were about to come on, he'd sort of nick out to the car park, sort of undoing his shirt. Yeah, great. So for years he was getting like action from Tism Groupies. Is that right? Wow. I think he had his own balaclava for a while. <laughs> uh, we've got to talk about our own Wikipedia internet phenomenon. That's Richard Marsden. Uh, that's him over there. Pushes mm-hmm. buttons on this show. Mm. Fine comedy writer in his own right. You know what I love that he does? I mean, of all the millions of things I love about the way Rich works, mm. is he's always got his hands on a couple of buttons ready. He's yeah. looking at you, but his hands mm. are ready. Yeah. So if you ask for something, bang, he's still looking you dead in the eyes. He plays the sting. Uh-huh. Absolutely. I play love this it. thing like a piano. It's I an extension it. of my body. I've got bandoleros <laughs> and across he's, my body. He's constantly, because, you know, we do a lot of work to undermine his good reputation. We do. With the public. And then he likes to bolster it back up again. He does. And uh, I don't know if he's getting a bit full of himself, uh. but here's what I did. I mean, I'm sure you cover the oil crisis somewhere in your book somewhere. Nowhere? Absolutely. No. Um. It's all about oil as well. Alan Jones, <laughs> Alan Jones with a lot of oil. Well, I asked Richard Marsden to write a script about the oil crisis and what we can do about it. Did you? Have a listen to what he came up with. Richard Marsden. Has the answer to the world's oil crisis. It's in his pocket. Go on, reach in. He won't bite. Richard Marsland. He is swarthy and he likes it French ass. That's right. Richard Marsland. Is a sex machine with a 12 month warranty and a full tank of gas. And ladies, I hope you like spunk, get go, gumption, and wherewithal, because Richard Marsland is chockers with the lot and ready to blow. But Richard Marsland is not just anybody's, despite all those stories about him turning tricks in the Triple M car park. Richard is a man of discernment, unless you're, as he puts it, racked up and ready to go. Don't even think about it, lady. Nor you, sir. He'll get to you later. It's true what they say about Richard Marsland. But sadly, very little of it is fit for broadcast. Why not discover his windswept charms, legendary appendage, and considerable panache on the syndromes for yourself? And hey, gents, having trouble finding the G-spot? Richard Marsland. 
will not only show you how to get there, he'll direct you to a picturesque little spot along the way where you might like to stop for a nibble. <laughs> That's because... Richard Marsland. Likes it blue. Real blue. Rodney Rude Frogsack Blue. Richard Marsland. Is Valentino, Caruso, Gutenberg, Jake from Jake and the Fat Man and Stefanovic rolled into one, left to stand and set to stun. Richard Marsland. His nude pictorial in Men's Health was described by Alan Jones as and caused him to the flag. Richard Marsland. Take the plunge and mind the grill. Richard Marsland. In the words of Gavin Wood. When you cop an eyeful. Oh, it's magnificent, you'll bar up. What has that got to do wow. with the oil crisis, Richard? Richard? It's all true. That's it's just you true. big noting yourself for about <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Gavin. Would. Really? Yeah, <laughs> Gavin's got to have a bit of the action too. I might have turned some tricks in the Triple M car park. Oh, That's what we've heard. Good tricks. Only with girls whose cans are icy cold. Oh! oh. I think uh, yesterday Charles Firth co-hosted the mm. program. He was treated at the scene, suffering minor injuries and more than a little embarrassment. <laughs> Let's meet uh, our cast, shall we? Uh, oh, guess what? Last night, Richard Marsland attempted to reenact the graphic opening scene from the film Short Bus. He was treated at the scene, suffering minor injuries and more than a little embarrassment. <laughs> Is that right, Richard? That's absolutely true. How close did you get? <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, Ed Cavalli had uh, last night his second breakdancing lesson. He was treated at the scene, suffering minor injuries and more than a little embarrassment. Ricky knows. Uh, I'm Tony Martin. I attempted to play sport yesterday. He was treated at the scene, suffering minor injuries and more than a little embarrassment. Peter Rosethorn is the host of ABC's Can We Help, mm. which I guess would cause anyone... More than a little embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's unfair. That's Give him a round. Yeah, last one. <laughs> Hello, gangsters. Sorry I was late, everybody. Oh, oh God. Oh, no. Ed. Antics, Don't ahoy. Don't leave your banana skins on the ground, <laughs> Ed. <laughs> oh, there's crummage on the seat from his sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Revolting. Ben, best thing about that, piece, you went to the trouble of miming it. Yeah, so yeah, you did, actually yeah, no. at the market yeah, and clutched and your eye. moved off my chair as well. Show on crumbs. radio, this. Certainly is. And our very first ever co-host, Peter Rose. Yes. Back in the early days. Wasn't, Wasn't it a shambles in those it, days? Oh, how has it awful. changed since then, Pete? Uh, it's got much worse. Really? Yeah, it's yes. used to have no discipline. That's why I made myself late. I was actually quite early. I was just walking up and down outside. <laughs> So it wasn't to be outdone by Greg Fleet. your time. Armitage, how are you? How are you doing, Pete? Excellent, thank you. Great to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. <laughs> Just get all the formalities <laughs> yeah, out mate, of the yeah. way. I'm too sincere. <laughs> you two have been introduced. Yes, we have. And what about, oh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but we will. Kath and Kim, there's a talk about oh, town. People just want more. Oh, this room is. People want more Kath and Kim. There's that bloke from uh, Little Britain, yeah. Matt Lucas. Yeah, yeah. And had he had he been told not to tell anyone, uh, that would have been a secret. Because that's out now that that's he's going to be appearing in Kath and Kim. That's a, a, that's a big coup. That's a coup. But that's what? Coup. Is he appearing in the TV series? Is there another film? What's it going to be? Is it a shopping centre <laughs> appearance? The last shopping shopping centre tour. <laughs> that would be good. You can't say anything. I can't say anything. All right. <laughs> yeah. And how far can you get down your street before someone yells out something about you on Kath and Kim? Oh, not very far. I was putting out, uh, I went to the car yesterday in my... Well, well, they weren't underpants. Was, <laughs> they used a, to be underpants. It was, it was, a, it was, you know, it was sleepwear. Yeah. And, uh, oh, no shit or anything. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. And uh, a school bus went past. <laughs> Freddy! <laughs> and you're shirtless. Did you give him a bit of ET? <laughs> uh, unintentional, yes. <laughs> Just wasn't concentrating. <laughs> ET's a natural thing. I'd hold it in all day and let it go for once every two weeks at my work. Right. Have you seen E.T.? I haven't. You haven't seen E.T.? You must be the only person I, in the country who hasn't. See, I could see, see how you would have. I could see how it could work. Yeah, it does. It's very strong. Amazingly. Yeah, it's and this strong. is the most visual show on radio, I know. so perhaps in the break. In the it's, break. It's, your, it's like a classic, though. It's, your, it's your, one of your big things. Oh, it's do. like my nips are getting bigger, if you tell us anything. I, like, I, what? During <laughs> that, I could see Peter Rosson going, wow, he cavalry. Young people, people who haven't seen my act. <laughs> Let's get back Fresh to the universe. <laughs> Let's get back to the university. <laughs> On the uni tour, Ed has got his interview.
international observers. No, he, no, no. Is that who they are? No, no. Is that who they okay, are? Okay. He's a song, Rich. Look, can we get, can Anna from the phones come in? No. Can you just bring, can Anna, come on no. into this year and switch let's, on that microphone. Let's not have Anna from the phones. Uh, let's but, talk emails. Because we've had, Ed brought in his two international yeah, observers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone's sort of not been saying what they're thinking. And then just before the show, Anna came out and said what everyone was thinking. Anna, what did you say? Did you get the girls from Oaks Day yesterday? <laughs> and actually, one of them is from Oaks Day yesterday, that, I found that, out. That, yeah, these, these are long-time friends, first-time observers. Sure. Uh, sure they are. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you've known both these women for ages? Yesterday. Years. Mm. Yesterday? Literally That's... years. Anna doesn't look convinced. No, she's not convinced. Anna's, Anna's wearing a Kendo and SeaWorld shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and loving it. Yeah. What do you reckon is going on here, Anna? Okay, so I've worked it out. One is an old friend. Yeah. And the lovely lady with glasses, yeah. Ed met yesterday at Oaks Day and brought her in to observe him. No, look, that's, that's a stretch. We, we, look, we had, we, it's, it's just, it's all timing. We've got to go, we come here and then we've got other things we have to do. Yeah, but sure. or every scene from Short Bus would be my guess. <laughs> yes. Is there any music to play? Is there any, or won't you play your any, single again? No. Uh. Is there any Toto or In Excess that we could crank out here? It's uncomptable. Is this finished? Is this, are we going to stop? Well, it's I like, tell you what, maybe we need to get the women singer? in here. No. <laughs> Maybe the international yeah. observers need to come in and explain themselves. Look, I'm comfortable with that. I, I've, I've, got, I've got nothing to hide. Tell right. value style. Hello, podcast listeners. Tony Martin here. I'm afraid all footage of that interview seems to have been erased. I don't know how that's happened, but uh, a number of crumbs were found in the tape library. Now back to the podcast. Julia Zamiro from Rock Quiz from Thank, you. uh, thank God You're Here is with us. Mm. Julia, uh, Rock Quiz, is it finished? Is it going? What's, Look, where are we up Tony, to? They're showing Rock Quiz by request at the moment. Oh, and Robert there was Quest. the lovely one with Paul Hester the other night. Yes. And it was great to watch, but boy, I looked fat. Uh-huh. And you know when you go, oh, that was two years ago. I'm glad I'm watching what I'm eating. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at the moment we're filming... Ten mm. brand spanking new ones. Oh. Yeah, I know what it's like when you look back at old footage and you're fatter. Not with me, but with my dog. Uh, really? Oh. My dog's in an episode of The Games playing <laughs> John Clark's dog. Did she audition for that? Nah, she just oh, showed up, started hit. licking people. That's how, that's how show business works. Is, is it? Is yeah, it? Go to lick, started. get a part. Oh, I've licked my way to the top. But <laughs> she's so fat. Is she? So fat in that episode. It's so embarrassing because she is like a coffee table. Yeah, yeah. And oh. if you look closely, a big ashtray and magazines fanned <laughs> on her back. That's how flat back she is she's in that episode. So Why is she so though? skinny now? Uh, starvation and yeah. cruelty. Cruelty. Yay. That's, that's yeah. the... And that's she's what on ice. doing for me. So Rock Quiz has made me cruel and starve. So Rock Quiz, is it on or isn't it? It's on. By request. It's by request. No one requested every night. it. Yes, we've got Can we punters. lift the lid? Can we punters. lift the lid on by request? Because they've done this for so many different shows. <laughs> Remember they did Friends by request and Seinfeld by request. Hey, hey by request was the one yes. that got me. <laughs> yes, as it. Call in if you've ever requested any hey, hey. If any actual people. Because I don't think, is it true? No, call in if you've requested to Denny Rockwiz because yeah. there are actual people out there who oh. use, you know, the computer really? and, that. and yeah. they use that and they say, we love that episode but we never got to see it or can we see it again because Paul Kelly rocks? I think okay. you'll find. No, no, that's true. Yeah. Mm. Oh, is it? The oh, last he's changed true. his tune no. now. <laughs> I'm, I promised him breakfast because he hasn't yeah. had any. Nothing. Why haven't you had any breakfast in no, Cavalier? Because Kelsey, you know, I live with two people, John and Kelsey. Yeah. And last night we were all sitting around shouting at the television and uh, I'd made a dessert. I've got. A, I've, made, I've invented a new dessert, right? It's it's mango, chopped up mangoes, or and chopped up strawberries with streets Vianetta. Wow, that's quite the invention. You'll be <laughs> quite the Jamie Oliver you can in a minute. Call that's in not, for the fact sheet. I it's, know <laughs> that's not nothing new. I thought you were going to say something really interesting. Like what's you've, not interesting about that? Well, didn't you kind of infuse it with some kind of vanilla? Vianetta, liquid? fruit and Vianetta. I'll, I'll get the Ultravox cube. Uh, yeah, if you could. <laughs> Vianetta, anyway. you mean nothing to me. No, but if you, uh, <laughs> but if Vianetta. you, but it's it's under, it's the most underrated dessert on the market. I always show up to a party with a streets Vianetta in my hand, <laughs> and people are always they at first they're like, oh, yeah. look at that guy with his streets Vianetta, and by the end of it, they're they're trying to lick the little plastic case it came in. Normally, you just have to go into the bathroom, throw it in the bath with all the other Vianettas <laughs> that other people have brought along. No, they haven't. And then what you do is you go and eat someone's other better Vianetta <laughs> yeah. and let someone else the eat your cheese. Cappuccino yeah. flavored one. Mm-hmm. Cappuccino mm-hmm. flavored mm-hmm. one's good. What's that got to do with John and Casey? Uh, who's Casey? I don't anyway, know. so Kelsey was just Kelsey. sitting there, yeah. and uh, sorry, uh, she Julia. said that she was off to the to the hospital in the morning 
And we were like, yeah, because yeah, John and I were like selfishly eating our Viennetta, going, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. And all of a sudden, we kind of tweaked, like, how are you getting there? And she said, oh, I'm just going to get a cab or a tram or hitchhike, right, in the rain or the snow. And so I said, no, 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 no I'll take you. So I, I had to drive her to the hospital, but I got lost. And then I was, in, I was the first time I've ever been, I've never had a real job, so I've never been in peak hour before. It sucks. Yes. Yeah, it does, it. It's terrible. Look at him. He's got surprise in his eyes. Hello to people stuck in a traffic jam right now. It's terrible. <laughs> in Cavaliers casting the spotlight on your world. Believe- and, every- and there's only one person in every car. Yes. Mm. Yeah, that's also popular. So there we go. I so, know. So then I it's was been like- happening a really long time. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was new. I nah, was going nah. get on board. Henry Ford. Have you heard of his work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah. made the car. Did he? Yeah. Internal combustion? But I'm they against used to go- it. <laughs> <laughs> It's not going to catch on the horseless <laughs> no. carriage. Yeah, so that was it. So I, I guess I'm a good Samaritan. Yeah. I'm a you great are. Samaritan. Yeah. You're a good I miss, friend. I'm a good friend. I'm a good flatmate. We've got to get into the hard news, Julia. Could you? Oh, Mark Butler's emailed oh, us with a big butt. story. Oh, the What's going on with Mark? Listen to this. Apparently an off-duty British soldier put a lit firework rocket up his backside good for man. a joke. Good for man. a joke. For a joke. He ended up in hospital with a condition that has been officially termed a scorched colon. <laughs> Watch what? out for that. Oh. <laughs> Watch out for scorched. Sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> How is the scorched colon today? Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> what possessed him? To All right. Bring the his own firecracker nah, to the It's a two-man operation. Is it? Yeah, because it's like the, in the army there's always two men. You know, when you're around like heavy machinery yeah. or live weapons, yes. yeah. there's always at least two people in case anything goes wrong. Would there not be a Private Benjamin in there somewhere? Might be a girl doing it too. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Complaining about the colour green. See, the thing is, when you stick a rocket up your ass, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you've got to make sure it's pointing downwards because you want it to fire out of your... You don't oh. want to fire it upwards into your body. That's a good point. Oh, do you think that's, See what I mean? that's what they haven't thought that through. No. Wait a sec. Hmm? Oh, right. Remember there's that bloke, Chris Lynham? Yes. Comedian yes, for yes, years. Yes, yes, yes. Made a living with a rocket up the made ass. Made a good living. And he would get on stage, uh, skyrocket up the ass mm. with there's no business like show business <laughs> play <laughs> on the PA. <laughs> But, you know, I'm Where sure. Is he now? Was, the Burns Ward, I think, is your answer. The hey. Scorch Colon Unit. <laughs> the, the SCU. Scorch Colon oh, Unit. Now we're talking. An That's... Australian spin off series, Scorch Colon Unit. Yes. Harold from Neighbours and Julia Zemiro. <laughs> yes, please. Investigating. Yep. See, we're creating acting and work. There's, and there's unresolved sexual tension between me and you. Oh, and Shanksy is the bad guy, right? Absolutely, yeah. Just scorching colons. <laughs> The drop of a hat. And playing Vienna. <laughs> okay, playing Vienna, scorching Collins. It's all happening again. There's... I went for my first proper acting audition in about two years what was the other it? day. Well, I can't tell you the program. But Biscuit it was... commercial? No, the... no, it was a character and she was oh. a prostitute. There, oh, said it. See, who said there was no work for women? <laughs> but it's a good prostitute role. Not a prostitute with a heart of gold, but it was prostitute with issues. And, um, oh, just and... not, a, not with a heart of gold, just no. a proper <laughs> prostitute. <laughs> Last week, uh, I went to the races a bit. Yeah. And I went the first day and I was kind of like, I'd kind of, you know, asked around the station, someone, you know, going to get me a last minute ticket. So I went along mm. and I worked out that if I, this one area, they gave me all the food I wanted and oh. like for free food, free drink all day. Yeah. So then I thought, all right, this is good. And I knew there was another day. So I spoke to them and I asked, can I come back again, please? Oh, and they said, right. yes. And then I saw someone else I knew and they took me into another place that had salmon, like actual salmon, like just sitting there rich and someone making crepes. So I ate that. And then the next day I was like, oh, I'd like to come back again, please. And they said, yes, you may, because I was being nice. I got back the next day and they'd got pasta this time, like really nice chicken pasta, yeah. Like this new type of this new soft drink. See, Ed, this is how it starts. <laughs> yeah. it and was, then before you know it, Chris Masters is writing a book about it you. Was, yeah. it and was, it's on four corners I and you cash for comment cavalry. I, wa- I waved <laughs> one flag at the general public. And they saluted. Uh, this is how it starts. It was amazing. By increment. I had a little lanyard, you know, I got to show it to people and go in places. It's You're never happened go to me work before. It off at the gym now? Because it sounds yeah, like you yeah. ate 15 mountains of food. It was just delicious. It what was- about that woman? Now, I don't even know who this is. Rebecca Twigley. No, I don't know. Her that's either. someone. The twig. That's someone who uh, goes out with a footballer. Is that does the she? Deal? Oh. And she's notable oh. because she's uh, not blonde. Is, is oh, that what that's wow. about? Oh, wow. Whoa. Do you know Mr. Marshall? Is, is it Chris Judd? I think she's Chris Judd's, who's basically no. the best player in ever. The NFL at the is moment. He, is he ever? Uh, yeah, ever? No, he's a terrific player. But he, yep. she wore a very special dress to the Brownlows last year, which got all the, okay. the photographers going wild. The red dress. Okay. Remember no. the red dress? No. The one? 
Yeah, yeah. well, Nikki does. Richie just switched on. Yeah, yeah. And, and, so, and since then, what's which dizzying heights has she scaled? Oh, I mean, the red dress has gone on tour. Has it? Yeah, it <laughs> right. actually went on tour. What you did know, it open for the Veronicas? <laughs> sure. But it says someone's written into the Melbourne Herald Sun today to say, Rebecca Twigley would do herself and everyone else a favour by a test favor? running her attire before she leaves home. Yeah. One <laughs> mistake too many to be an accident, me thinks. Oh, me no, thinks. me thinks. <laughs> Yo, my very my lord. lady. Dove. <laughs> lady doth show you much boo. Me thinks, <laughs> <laughs> but it, oh, so that's just her shtick. Yeah, yeah. And she Norg's wore a Kimbo. Yeah, yeah, she wore something. That's really the act. Nice. Yeah. I sometimes it's crack a Kimbo. Sometimes the the dress is like cut at the back, yeah. and just a little. <laughs> just a little just slide. Go, <laughs> like a little... And so that are they called the Twigglies? Is that what they're known as? <laughs> Should be. People on walkie talkies. The Twigglies are loose. <laughs> Send photographers <laughs> to this address. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty good schmooze. I, I think we. I schmooze. Is that what we're doing? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you announce that? Yeah, well, that's know, the premise. Sort of yeah. Hey, Adam. Hello. Talking through your schmooze, Adam. What happened to me? Well, uh, I schmoozed my way onto TV. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, you remember a little while ago, Vince Colosimo hosted a show called Australia's Most Identical Twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had all these experts, in inverted commas, of people who, you know, the dental people to match dental records yeah. and stuff. And it was a bit of a fun thing. They wanted to see if they danced the same. Oh, yeah. I work in the arcade industry, and they hired one of those coin-operated dance machines oh, yeah, that yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yes. and I said, oh, well, you know, it's a little bit difficult to use. You know, your, your tech guys might not be able to understand what's going on, you know, so maybe you might need someone to operate oh, it for you. Yeah. I go, oh, oh okay, uh, oh, just whack a lab coat on him and stick him by the machine. So I got to be on camera and they were asking me, so what do you think the dancing people like? Oh, yes, the footsteps are rather similar and waffle, oh. waffle, 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 everything. So I got a spot on the TV. It was awesome. That is I've sensational. I've been trying to smooth my way in to see whether or not I can possibly get onto the set of a, of a movie that's being made. So maybe you know someone down at Working Dog Tony, wink, wink, wink nudge, nudge. Yeah, well, bring your white coat along. That's obviously <laughs> yeah, the key. Absolutely. So, we need a dancing expert. Oh, he have a white coat. Yeah. <laughs> Get this. Weekdays on the Triple M Network and KOFM in Newcastle.